Hey everybody, Jason here. So I'm out in the off-grid tiny cabin that I'm building and if you've been watching the series, you know that the last video I put foam insulation in the walls and vapor barrier up. So since then I've started to do some of the paneling on the inside and that video is going to be out in a little while. I've got a little delay at the moment because of COVID-19 in getting, well, the materials that I need to finish it. So. Hopefully I have them soon and yeah, we can keep going. In the last video, I also did not really a review, but a bit of a review on the Mr. Heater. Yeah, Mr. Heater, little buddy heater. And that's it here. And truthfully, while I was using it, I wasn't very impressed. Uh, now don't get me wrong, it works, it heats up, but there were a few issues that I had with it. Before I continue, I should say that I'm using this to just take the cold out of the room. So I'm in Canada and, you know, temperatures drop below zero Celsius. So today it's zero and in the last video it was also zero. So point is, you know, I want it warm enough that I don't have to wear gloves and that my fingers aren't freezing while I'm working out here. So if I can get the temperature up to 10 or 15 degrees and, you know, now that it's insulated, maintain that temperature in here, then I'll be more comfortable when I'm working. Now, the issues that I had with the little buddy heater, well, you know, you can see for yourself, the top is top heavy and then it's got a small base, but the canister didn't fit into the base either. It did, but not a good fit, and so I really didn't like that. I had a comment left on that video from Pam and CJ, and they said to take off the black cap off the bottom of the propane tank. So this is the black cap here, and I don't wanna to seem too ridiculous. Uh, truthfully, I thought this did come off, but I had a heck of a time trying to get it off, and so I was concerned about well, blowing up a canister while I was trying to pry this off of it. Um, it turned out that there was glue in the bottom, and so I don't know if that's something that they always do, but if you're doing the same thing, yeah, take off this uh, black cap. When I had the comment, I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot again, and pride and pride, and then, yeah, sure enough, it popped off. So now that that's off, the bottom does fit in a lot better, right? Like it's a proper size fit. So yeah, I'm much more comfortable with having this running out here. The other thing was that I'm concerned with carbon monoxide. So the little buddy heater isn't intended for indoor use. So there is no carbon monoxide shut off. I don't know why Mr. Heater doesn't build a carbon monoxide shut off into the heater. Uh, they do with their heater one step up from this one, but that one heats a space that's like four times the size of my cabin. So with concern over carbon monoxide, I did have another comment from another viewer, uh, Mitch Rossman, and he suggested to get a carbon monoxide sensor. He said that they're uh, better than just a, a carbon monoxide detector. And so Mitch, I, well, I don't want to say lazy, but I went the easier route and just went to my local store. Uh, they didn't have any sensors. They did have a carbon monoxide detector. And so I grabbed that. And so it's going to give me at least some peace of mind this time around. And as I'm out here, if I'm running it and forget to shut it off or whatever, and the carbon monoxide gets to a dangerous level, this thing will go off. So it does have a test. I'll show you just quickly. So if I hear four beeps, I know carbon monoxide levels are high and to, you know, vent the place and get out of here for a while until it can, uh, you know, ventilate out. Anyway, so I'm gonna do the test again today uh, because I'm really curious as to how long it will take for the tiny cabin to warm up. In the last test, it took 40 minutes and that's quite a while to get up to 10 degrees. So I'm gonna test it again now that it's insulated. You know, one thing that I find interesting is that the foam, if I lean back on the wall with the foam behind me, uh, like after probably a minute, I can actually feel the warmth from my back between the foam and my back. So I'm pretty impressed with that. And I think that there's gonna be quite a bit of 
like heat retention in here and it should take a lot less time to get up to a comfortable temperature and it should take a lot longer for the temperature to drop in here so that I would have to turn this back on again. Okay, so why don't I get everything set up and we'll start the test. Okay, so heater's on. I'm gonna press start on the stopwatch and we'll see how long it takes. Okay, well, I'm gonna be sitting out here for a while. I'm not sure how long, but last time it took 40 minutes to warm the space up. So I brought the mandolin out. I'm gonna just uh, do some practice. I'm a terrible player, but I figure I've got, you know, up to 40 minutes, so <laughs> might as well make best use of the time. Yeah, I'm gonna have to tune it up. Thing is, bringing instruments in and out from different environments, especially out here where it's zero, uh, strings are metal, so, you know, they expand and contract. So this thing's gonna be out of tune big time, so I'm gonna take care of that while I wait. In here. Anyway, that's all you're gonna get. So we're gonna wait and uh, see how long it takes to warm up in here. Okay, well, we've just reached 10 degrees Celsius and the timer is at 25 minutes. Okay. Let me see. Last time it took 40 minutes to get up to 10 degrees from zero. So definitely the, the work insulating and putting the vapor barrier up uh, is made an improvement for heat retention, I guess. And uh, yeah, that makes me happy. Now I'm waiting for the, the rest of the wood to be finished before I can finish the inside. I don't know how long that's gonna be. Hopefully I get another video, you know, in the next week or two. Um, but I did wanna do this because I didn't really bad mouth the Mr. Heater little buddy, but I wasn't that impressed with it, uh, so I wanted to test it again, clarify a couple of the things, a few of my complaints. You know, taking this off the bottom seems simple enough, but at the time I wasn't sure what would happen if I dug deep and tore that off. But yeah, that solved the, you know, the stability of it quite a bit. So yeah, also good that, uh, you know, no carbon monoxide alarm and uh, really, you know, like obviously 10 degrees Celsius isn't cooking warm, um, but all I want is to be able to be out here and be working without, you know, my fingers freezing and, you know, around 10 degrees will be 
you know, comfortable. So still lots to do out here and uh, plenty of winter left. Yeah, I want to tell you about what I'm doing and everything, but I'm going to hold off until the next video. So anyway, so that's all I have for you today. Um, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If this is your first time to the channel, I've got a whole playlist on building this uh, tiny off-grid cabin, so check it out and don't forget to subscribe, okay? Anyhow, thanks for watching.